Hey everybody, you've joined me on a freezing cold winter day. I need to pop up into town to get some bits and pieces for the XJ6 build. Um, I also currently have the Insta360 ONE X2 uh, that Insta360 have sent me to do a review on. This isn't the review for it, I'm just, this is the first time I've ever stuck it on. But I thought, you know, if I'm riding up there, let's stick the cameras on because I don't get to do too many riding videos at the moment, but that will increase because, uh, well, I have a triumph coming over Christmas and New Year that we fun. It is currently zero degrees, so it feels like about minus two. And this is where I do miss the XJ6 for the winter because that thing protects you from the wind. It cooks you from the underneath because it gets so hot. It has heated grips. Oh, it's, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I'm wearing summer gloves and I'm on a supermoto. This is freezing. So far, the One X2 looks quite interesting they have included a couple of features that i really wanted to see included out of the first one um so yeah it's gonna it's gonna be very interesting to see what that's like and i say i will give you a review on it i'm probably gonna end up doing like a short light review to start with um just after my first a few initial uses and then do a more in-depth review later on when i've had a chance to use it a lot more uh you know i use the one x anyway and i, I know that's a good camera it does me well so as long as this can do what that does as a minimum then you know this one's better because it's got higher qualities but actually the reality of it is this does 4k in like 50 fps you can only do it's 5.7k in 30 fps uh, which means i'm running it in 4k not 5.7 because um well I, I want 60 or 50 fps 30 is not enough oh and actually here's another thing um obviously i've got the rosso twos on here and when I said I was getting these, some people said, oh, you want to watch out in the wet and cold, they've got no grip. Um, obviously, I'm not pushing things here, so being very careful, because this is slippery, whatever. But I haven't noticed them letting go under hard acceleration or anything like that. It's, it's, it, they seem to have been great, to be fair. Better not say too much, you know, because the next corner I go around, I'm just going to go whip. I've just realised by the time that this goes out, I'm already going to have had my birthday on the 10th of December. Uh, it was my uh, 35th birthday. 35. Really? Where did the time go? How am I 35 already? But then I saw a thing the other day. It was a video of this old chap and they're saying to him, yeah, like, you're 98, mate. And he's like, no. No, no, no. He goes, I was born in, like, 1919, so I'd be in the, like, yeah, you'll be 100. But no, it's like, I can't remember exactly. It was basically, he was, like, 99 the next year and 100 the next. And he's just like, I'm old. Where did all the time go? And I'm like, oh, my God. That's exactly how I feel. And that's the same at 100, which means it just, from now on, it's just going to go, 100. And I'm not even going to see it go. I'm joking. I know, I'm, I'm young. You know, massive changes can happen in just a few years. Look at... I mean, I quit my job um, as, as a chef uh, like four, four and a bit years ago, something like that, four, nearly five years ago. I can't remember exactly. And these past few years have just blown by. But um, the thing that I wanted to achieve back when I quitted, I'm now doing. And I'm, I'm just building on that and building on that and trying to make everything as good as I possibly can to build the audience. You know more people get on board it just makes everything better it's like this it's a positive future curve mm. really i should have worn another pair of gloves something with a gauntlet so the wind doesn't go directly up my jacket arms that's probably a would have been a smart decision normally i want to go for a blast up the dual carriageway not today not today it is too damn cold for that Oh my God, I've just realized if my birthday's in three days, that means Christmas is in two weeks and three days. I haven't even conceived of starting my Christmas shot. Oh Jesus Christ, I need to do that today. Right, well, I've just used the uh, the One X2 on the 360 mode, so we'll see what that's like. But one of the things they've done is what I asked for them to do on the first one, is have it so you can just use one camera. So I'm gonna try that on the way back. <sighs> okay, so we need to put this into 150 mode. Switch which camera it's facing. That one's facing me. That's all okay. Record. 
sorry for the slight jump in location, I realised I needed to come over here and I was not about to start up the camera and get it all synced up just to do 30 seconds around the corner. Uh, so I've popped over here, had to get some bits from Wix, and now I can head back home. Yay! And as I say, you may have just seen, I have put the camera into the 150 mode, which means it's only using one side of the camera. Uh, so it's a it's the equivalent of a GoPro, which is exactly what I said they should have done with the One X. Because one of the things the One X does is it uses both lenses to adjust the brightness. So if one lens is very bright and one is very dark, you end up with the, the wrong exposure on the other side, basically. Which meant that in the summer, when it was very bright out, I would have to put white tape on the front of my jacket if I wanted to chest mount it. So one camera's facing my dark jacket, because that dark jacket would completely throw out the front camera. So yes, I did ride around with white tape stuck to my chest every time I chest mounted that to get the exposure correct. It works. Okay, well as I'm heading back on the island and I want to try this view out, I'm going to tell you about what happened last night. So, a couple of weeks ago, I saw on Amazon one of those trail cameras, you know, the ones that automatically turn on when something walks in front of it, it can do night vision and stuff like that. It was like 30 quid because it was on some half price offer. It's not amazing quality or anything, but it's a fun way of finding out what's going on in your garden. Um, in the past, like when we've had, we thought someone else's cat was coming in and eating our cat's food, I could have found out that way. Uh, turns out it was because I caught the little thing. Uh, never seen a cat so surprised in all your life it just walked past me at about two o'clock in the morning and then it was like oh oh god it's a person they're not normally up now but the first mystery i've been trying to solve is we chuck scraps and stuff into the garden you know bits of old bread old loaves and a bit of meat here and there something that just anything that's that some wildlife's going to eat and take away overnight we'll chuck it out there so I've been sticking the trail camera outside at night to see, you know, what's been eaten what. And I've been putting out food, like some cat biscuits and some cat food and stuff, um, just to see what's been going on. Well, I've had it out five nights and I've now discovered that the same black and white cat that is not our black and white cat is always first to find the food and it's been getting double meals all week. Well, for the past week and a bit. As it turns out, we also have about six other cats that visit the garden, as I've seen from various pieces of footage. There's also a fox that's visited the garden and a hedgehog or two well this is where the story starts the last night so last night i'm like oh, i'm gonna stick the camera out so i go out there to put the camera out open the door and i've got the purple squidgy shoes on you know the, the, the comfy soft shoes thank god and i just as i step out the door i am being very careful as i'm stepping i just sort of squidge something slightly with my right foot and i was like oh no what was that and I looked down and it was a hedgehog, it had called, curled itself into a ball and I kind of, I, I kind of, I didn't stand on it. It was like my, t like the edge of my shoe, just on the edge of its prickles where it was in a ball. So it was just like a slight squish, but it was fine. You know, I hadn't like crushed it. <laughs> the second, the second I looked down and saw that, I thought, oh no, I'm going to have to tell, tell Reno about this. And I just know her <laughs> reaction is going to be, you squished him. <laughs> Well, sure enough, that's exactly what she said to me when I told her this morning. However, she was pleased to know that because I felt so possibly bad about just, just stepping on the edge of him, it was fine, but I just felt so bad. I was like, I know, I'll, I'll put some food next to it and I'll just see, like, see it's okay, make sure it's not limping or anything like that. I don't feel terrible if, that was, if I'd hurt it. Well, you can see its little, like, hole underneath where it's curled into a ball and you just see its eyes. And it's like breathing like, <gasps> Because, you know, something's just tried to kill it, as far as it knows. And I stood and waited for a few minutes, and it was, uh, its breathing sort of slowed. And then suddenly, its breathing went to, like, a, a million mile an hour. I'm not trusting you. I'm looking myself, thanks, mate. Jesus. You can't see around that corner any better than I can. Um, <laughs> oh, nasty has got a rear-facing camera. Anyway, it was, like, going from, like, heavy breathing to normal breathing. And then suddenly, this, like, hyper-sniffing as it started to smell the food next to it. You know, like when you put food under a, a sleeping dog's nose. Well, it whipped out of its little ball super fast, ran a few steps over to the food and ate all of it, as it turns out, because later on it appeared on the trail cam, eating the second packet of food. So that little hedgehog, he may have got squished, and I'm sorry for squishing him slightly, but he was unhurt. And he got two, two feedings. And eat it, it was a very little one. Quite skinny looking for this time of year, so I am trying to fatten them up as much as I can. So that is the tale of how and why I squished a hedgehog with my foot. <laughs> oh, let's go. Oh 
everyone, there's a little update for the XJ6. What I've just picked up now is some of the stuff, the final stuff I needed to actually do a few jobs to the bike. I've also had some stuff arrive from, uh, from different things I've ordered that's going to allow me to start doing a few little jobs. But I do need to sort that stand out, like, today, really. Yeah. But there we go. Even if it's just a quick demonstration of the Insta360 ONE X2 that I will be reviewing in the new near future, so if you want to subscribe to see that, do that. I'm also going to do a review on the Hero 9 at some point. I'm going to talk about, you know, my up-to-date vlogging setup, assuming this becomes my up-to-date vlogging setup. Um, the Hero 9 I am incredibly happy with, apart from the fact that I haven't tried plugging a mic into it, and I know some people are having problems with that. Uh, at the moment. I've got all the bits to do it, but because of the bad weather and I'm using this voice recorder separately and it's worked so well, um, I've just found that I'm not trying to make the GoPro do that. So yeah, smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you'd like to help support this channel, please consider joining my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. And also an absolutely humongous thank you to my Patrons. Um, for continuing to support me through the winter while I'm, you know, I'm not riding so much, I'm not out on all the bikes. I know from discussing with them, they absolutely love what I do. Um, and if you're one of those people and you want to help support this, then please do consider Patreon. Links in the description. If you can't, totally understand it, but please hit that like button. Anyway, until the next one, when I hopefully be a bit warmer, bye-bye.